We are back here with Erica, and she just told her story of her daughter, Avery, who was stillborn. Um, we are, I'm excited to talk about um, kind of what life has looked like after um, Avery's birth. So welcome again, Erica. Thank you so much for your time again. Thank you, Winter. Thanks for having me. Okay, so as some context, can you tell us how long ago Avery was born and what happened kind of around what week she was born and such? Sure. So um, it was May 25th, 2012, when um, we found out Avery was stillborn or when she was stillborn. So 10 years ago. And what was the other question? <laughs> oh, and you were, um, you were like around 40 weeks, yeah. right? 41 weeks, actually, right? Yeah. So I was 41 weeks pregnant when she, when she was born. Yeah. And um, the cause of her passing, do you, um, can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Sure. Yeah. We found out that it was due to an umbilical cord accident. Yeah. And it, I would highly recommend listening to her story. It was really, oh, it was very, it's hard. And, but I'm glad that we were able to get Avery's story recorded. So I would highly recommend that um, if you want to check that check that out. So Erica, so when, after Avery, Avery was born and you guys had her kind of her memorial service, um, with your family, how did, how did those first little, those first few months look like for you and Greg, your husband, and basically how did you survive that first little bit of time? It was so difficult. I mean, just the basics of, of everyday life, were crippling for us. Um, taking a shower, getting out of bed, um, even just like sleeping was hard. And like my, I felt like I was having a lot of like night terrors, um, like dreams that I was still pregnant, um, that this was all like, not like our reality. Um, spent a lot of time. My dad had, who came to visit us from Florida had return back home. And he was so helpful for me. Like when I was having those times in the middle of the night, you know, I wanted Greg was back to work. He only had about two, two weeks of time that he took for um, bereavement. And then I was still home. So, you know, I wanted him to get rest so that he'd be able to be okay and function at work. So I would get up a lot of times and like go just go sit out on my back porch and talk to my dad on the phone to clear my mind. And that was so incredibly helpful to have somebody else to talk to. You know, yeah. I'm sure my husband was like, oh my God, you know, sometimes need some other people to rely on other than your spouse. So he's going through it too. And so yeah, he yes. I mean, having having some outlets other than the person that went through it with you is, is yes. always super helpful. It's really nice yeah. of your dad to be willing to chat with you at all hours. It sounds like. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's retired, so he's, <laughs> he's got time. <laughs> he's got time. Yeah, no, he, I mean, and, and their life revolved around uh, me and everything that, I mean, my parents were constantly checking in to see mm-hmm. how we were doing. Um, we had such wonderful support between our family and friends. We were really fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And Greg went back to work two weeks after, which is, I mean, understandable uh, just because, you know, yeah, bereavement is short, like yes. the bereavement leave is short. How about you? Were you able to take a little bit more time off because you had just given birth to a 41 week year old? Yes. Uh, uh, you know, like, so were you able to take time off? Yeah. So yeah, I was given like this six weeks time for the delivery. And then I put in a request for, um, like a, a personal leave or oh, I good. Honestly, it was something like that. Yeah. And, um, so I took a little extra time. I can't remember exactly. I want to say it was about a total of three months time. Oh, good. Um, and I, it was really hard to go back to work and it was hard mostly to face the people I worked in an office setting at the time. Uh, and now we're partially remote. So there's not as many people in the office, but it was hard to go back and see people I'd been working there for a really long time, knew everybody. um, And most people knew what had happened, but just having to look people in the eye, like knowing that they didn't know what to say to me and I didn't know what to say to them was really hard. But um, I mean, yeah, even like the beginning days, like, I don't even know how we got through it. It's it was just day by day, moment by moment. And yeah, some of those, just like the 
benign things like showering or just knowing what to do with yourself too. Like, how do I occupy all of this time? You know, like I would just want to be sleeping or um, when we should have been taking care of a newborn baby, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It really is like, I should be doing something differently. So, so different. And now, yeah, you're just beside yourself with like, yeah, you just, it's a puzzle (laughs) in your brain. Your brain is trying to figure out what's happening and your body's trying to like, yeah, something else should be have happened. Yeah. And you're recovering from, you know, recovering from giving birth and all of these fun things that happen afterward. I know. I think, you know, sometimes people forget that your baby died, but your body doesn't realize that. So your, your milk comes in. I know people have talked about that, but like your milk comes in, you're like bleeding and you're having all of those after effects. Your body doesn't understand what's happened. So, I mean, in a way, I guess maybe it's sort of a good distraction that I was able to focus on like taking care of myself some, but yeah, it's, it's hard. It is yeah. really hard. It really is. You mentioned in your other episode that you have three boys. You have three other children. Yes. Um, three little boys. And talking a little bit about pregnancy after loss and parenting after loss, how how did you guys transition or make decisions to to try again? Or yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I I found that decision to be extremely crippling. Like I don't think I can go through that again. Like I, it was, it was too much. It was too much for a long time there before I made a decision about it. It was, I mean, we, we were terrified to try again, but at the same time, like the saying, um, you know, empty, empty, like having empty heart arms, um, is so true. Like your arms are just aching to hold that baby. And that's all we wanted was to have a baby. And we wanted Avery, of course, but not having her just really nail, I don't know saying the right words, but really showed us how much we wanted to be parents um, again. And we took the time to heal physically Mm -hmm. um, and started our grief journey. We, my husband and I started going to see a private counselor who Mm. specializes in pregnancy and infant loss. Um, so we were seeing, yeah, uh, it was amazing. So uh, that the bereavement nurse, um, gave me some Mm. contacts and I found her through, found the therapist through her. Um, so we were seeing her, I want to say like once every two weeks. Um, and then I started going to a monthly support group that was also in my discharge paperwork. Um, so there were month, there was a monthly support group that was actually run by that bereavement nurse. Um, yeah, that was at the hospital that I delivered at. So it was more of a, um, because she's a nurse and I think she's like also a health educator. So she knows how to navigate the conversation and keep it within certain limits type of thing. So we went to a group that was led by her. Um, and then I, on my own also (laughs) went to, I'm laughing because I just needed all the support that I could get. And, you know, I felt like sometimes my closest, like best friends, I mean, I'm a a people person if you can't tell. (laughs) Um, but so, and I like to talk and (laughs) I felt like sometimes I didn't want to like wear my friendship thin with them that like, you know, they, they were incredible and so helpful, but it just helped me so much more to be in company with moms and families who like truly understood. So, yeah. So we were going to the private therapist, um, the support group that was run by the hospital. And then we were also going to, um, well, I was going to another support group called the tears foundation. Oh, okay. um, and they have chapters all throughout the United States. And I don't think in every single state, but, mm-hmm. um, so they offer peer led support. Oh, okay. And that's, so a, I and I would say them. that would be a little bit different too, because like, I, I guess when we've gone to support groups, it's been peer led. And once again, it feels so I'm grateful for that because it's like, we can talk about having lost our baby and it's, they get it. Like they get it automatically. 
Yes. Yeah. And it's not, you know, people aren't afraid to talk about it or they don't shy away from, yeah. you know, talking about things that feel taboo or yeah, like they, they're, they're not just trying to put a bandaid on it. You know, when you hear the things like, oh, um, it, everything happens for a reason. Like they're not there to say that yes. they're there to help and support you and bring you through this horrible time. Yeah. So that's pretty great. I, I, yeah. and that's awesome that you sought out that support because that's the way you, you process things. And cause it's not, I mean, it's like some of those support groups are not for everyone and yeah. therapy is not for everyone either, but <laughs> Like knowing you and knowing your um, personality, I think that like you chose what was right for you. I think yeah. that's great. My and my husband is like the complete opposite of really? me. So yes, at like the hospital support group, he would come along with me, but he would just sit there and yeah. like hold, rub my leg or pat my back or you know offer me comfort when I would talk, and it was really emotional for me. Um, sometimes he would speak up and say something, um, but but for the most part, he was there for emotional support for me yeah. um because he knew that's what i needed yeah um, yeah and so he, he, and it sounds like he doesn't really pro i mean like not process that way but like that is not at, i mean he he probably has other methods that will help that have helped him through yeah definitely more of a a private yeah. you know he's like you said he's still processed he's still grieved but mm -hmm. just in a much different way yeah 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 i <laughs> we we're all different, but it seems like the women need to talk about things. Yes, <laughs> it, for it, sure. it helps to talk about things, at least for me too. So yeah, and that was a, a somewhat of a, a struggle for me when we really? would go to our private therapist. I'd say like, I feel like you're not, um, you know, you're not grieving. And he would say like, Erica, there's times where I like cry in the shower, but you don't know it because I just need that alone time. And mm -hmm. it just made me realize and open my eyes to the fact that, yeah, not, not everybody processes this the same way that I do. Yeah. yeah. Or expresses it in a way that, yeah, you see, see sometimes like, yeah, just the so weeping outward. And, yes. so outwardly. Yeah. Some people are very private and the fact that, yeah. Cause I, not when you said that, I was like, I'm pretty sure Lee, my husband would do that too. He would go into the, yeah. he would make sure that I'm asleep and then he would go and have a good cry in the living room or yeah. uh, when he was in the shower or whatever. So definitely. Uh, yeah. So this um, Tears Foundation, did they, was it just uh, talking specifically about loss or had any of those parents started to navigate having children afterward? Uh, that's one thing I noticed about some of the support groups. They always have like a pregnancy after loss support group that helps navigate those decisions that need, that you are going to be making. <laughs> yeah. So early on, it was mostly just the, mm -hmm. the, they, so they have a regular support group for like just an after loss yes. support group. And then they do have a pregnancy after loss support group. So at, in the beginning, I was only going to their, like the standard loss mm -hmm. support, but then I became pregnant very quickly after losing Avery. So oh, our okay. oldest son, Ryan is, was born not even a year. So Avery's birthday was May 26th and Ryan was born May 7th the following year. Oh, okay. So, so it I got was pregnant. very quickly. Yes, it was. Um, I mean, so I switched to a different practice because I just felt like that's what I needed to do. And that there were, it felt to me that there were some missteps and errors and mm -hmm. what had happened with Avery that I needed to, I guess, like wipe the slate clean and have yep. new providers. So we went that route and, um, the doctor that I was seeing was willing to, you know, work with me very closely and monitor me closely, Good. um, to be sure that I had a safe and, uh, you know, well supported and, and closely monitored pregnancy, yes. um, which was amazing. So, um, so yeah, he, he told me that once I had a few normal periods, it would be okay to try and conceive again. And, I want to say we got pregnant in like the second try. So, um, yeah. or maybe it was the first time because yeah. the timing was so quickly, yeah. um, but we were very fortunate, but, but pregnancy after loss is so scary. You know, you're, it's such a long time pregnancy, you know, nine months of time does not go by quickly, especially when you've had a loss mm -hmm. and that's lingering, you know, in the back of your head about the what ifs. Yeah. Um, all throughout. 
when you said the nine months is so long, I was like, after loss, it is so, you guys, like, I can't even tell you how long it is. It is, it is hard and it is stressful and there's so much anxiety <laughs> built into yes. it. So I just, I, yeah, I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Uh, were you guys, had, had you guys talked about getting pregnant that quickly? We knew we, like I said, we, we knew we wanted to have okay. another baby and yeah. we're, you know, through going to tears foundation, um, talking with other moms, there were some moms who felt that they're, they needed to give themselves like say a year to yeah. meet all of those milestones and all the holidays and the first year birthday yeah. for their child, um, that they needed to wait that year. Um, but then there was other moms who were like me and felt that they wanted to get pregnant quickly and yeah. have another baby. Um, because I knew we would be grieving forever. And, yes. you know, like we, I think that was maybe sort of a distraction throughout the pregnancy was grieving and going through those heavy, hard times, those first anniversaries, those first months, the first Christmas without our daughter. But I guess in my heart, I was, you know, pregnant again. So it was nice to have that hope to help us through. Yeah. It changes your perspective on a lot of things, but having that kind of another little baby kind of on the way is really, really nice too. Yeah. Anxiety filled, but nice as well. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yes, yes. And how was that pregnancy with Ryan? Was everything, um, did that turn out okay? I mean, like in yeah. the sense of like you felt good and and everything was checking out. You were getting monitored more, which is great. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, I mean, the pregnancy, it was like very similar, s- smooth sailing, no issues um, other than just like horrible anxiety and worry and being afraid, but yeah, no, medically I had a really healthy, great pregnancy with him. So yeah. was very fortunate again. And when, we, when he was born, how was, how was that experience? Oh my, just what, like, I, I will say that having had a loss prior, like yeah. not all babies are special when they're born, but going through what we went through with Avery and then having Ryan be born was just, oh my God, what a moment and hearing that cry and holding him and oh my gosh, and being able to look into his eyes. And it was just incredible, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It it really is. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but then you, um, basically will celebrate Avery's birthday, like a couple weeks after he was born, right? Essentially. Yes. Yes. So it's, I feel like we have a lot in there. We have Ryan's birthday yeah, and then okay. Mother's Day is oh, tied yes. in there. Uh-huh. And then um, Avery's birthday, the end of May. <clears throat> and then I, I did want to mention, so the, one of the things that we do to honor her is, um, so the, through the group, the Tears Foundation, they have an annual walk. Yeah. Um, that's a big fundraiser for them. And the, the walk is, the, it's always the weekend after Mother's Day, and I think they purposefully put it there and the timing there, you know, for moms who are grieving. And yeah. it just Mother's Day is so hard as it is. Yep. Um, so it's nice to have that. So we've month the month of May is very busy for us. Yeah, but it really is. <laughs> yeah, but it's nice to have the the walk in place because it feels like our way of honoring her without, you know, having to do a whole lot of like actual planning myself, you know, it's like kind of like a, something that's set in place for us. So. Which is great. I, we usually obviously have the walk, um, the walk of remembrance in October's and stuff. So, but it's kind of cool having it in around, I mean, after mother's day, like really that's to talk to my (laughs) local chapter of (laughs) see if they can do anything like that. Yeah. And then you went on to have a couple of other other sons as well, but I know that you had some issues um, getting pregnant with your last son. Is that right? Yeah. So um, our youngest son, we, so I had him when I was 39 Mm -hmm. um, and it, but it took us quite a while to get pregnant. We never had um, infertility or fertility issues prior. um, But I think having, being on the older side, um, I know that like your egg quality goes down and egg count goes down and um, sometimes things change with your husband's, you know, sperm quality and that kind of thing. So yeah, we had some difficulty getting 
pregnant with him and um, we ended up having to seek out fertility treatments. So mm. um, we went through a couple cycles of IUI and then did a cycle of IVF to get pregnant with him. But um, our, our IVF cycle actually was not very successful. We went through all of the, the steps to do a retrieval, but didn't um, oh. actually end up having any embryos oh. that were fertilized. Yeah. yeah. So they like take a number of, and I'm saying this in horrible non-medical terms, <laughs> but you know, yeah. when you go through yeah. IVF, you, they give you all of these medications to force your body to p- create a lot of eggs. And then yeah. the eggs are retrieved. And then once those eggs are retrieved, they um, fertilize them with the sperm and then they monitor them to see how many embryos you'll get. And um, that count initially, like how many are yeah. taken, it, it's never that number. Like it always goes down because some oh. of them die yeah. or the quality goes down. So I think I only had like three eggs retrieved and um, none of them made it to become em- embryos. So oh, yeah. it was really d- so disappointing. Um, yeah, there's a grief that. in that as well. Like, uh, fertility yes. yeah, or infertility is, has its own set of grief. Cause you're like, Oh, now my family's not going to look like how I want it to look either. Like, yeah, it's loaded as well. Definitely. Yeah. So our, uh, fertility, uh, doctor said to us, you know, I think because of your age, like it's probably better to stick with IUI. So, um, after the failed cycle of IVF, um, we went back to IUI and, um, thankfully became pregnant with our, with our youngest son, Parker. Um, well, let me back up there. So, um, we did become, we did get pregnant prior to having Parker, um, uh, through IUI, and when you go through fertility treatments, they monitor you super closely. Like you find out yep. you're pregnant when you're only like four weeks along. It's yep. crazy how early in this, in everything you find out mm-hmm. and hear a heartbeat and that sort of thing. So, so yeah, we found out we were pregnant and heard the heartbeat. And I mean, the baby's so tiny at that point mm-hmm. that it's hard for them to know whether everything's okay or not, but there was a heartbeat and things looked good. Um, you know, for such an early stage of pregnancy, I want to say like five or six weeks. Um, but we were going back for like regular ultrasounds just to monitor the progression of the, of the baby. Um, but then around, I want to say around nine weeks, the baby's heart rate was slowing and it looked like the baby hadn't grown to, to how like big the baby should have been. Mm -hmm. Um, so our doctor told me to, to wait. And I came back another week later and she kind of gave me the heads up, like, you know, this really isn't looking that great. Like the baby should be this size. Like when they're measuring like rump to, or I forget the measurement, what it's called, but yeah. yeah, So like the measurement was off the heart rate being lower. She just kind of, I felt like thankfully gave me the, the heads up that things may not go well. So I came back a week later and that's when we were told that, um, unfortunately we had lost that baby. Um, I know. So it was, it is so hard. That was like 10 weeks or so. 10 weeks. Yeah. So it was, you know, it's hard that you're going through. I feel like fertility goes, has so much more pressure, puts so much more pressure on things to go the right way because it's time and sometimes a lot of money and, your hearts are invested in it. Like Mm -hmm. not that your heart isn't in it when you're trying to get pregnant on your own, but you know, when you have all of these other interventions involved Mm -hmm. and you're getting up at 5am to go give blood work and, you know, they're doing it very often, like several times a week so that they can see like pinpoint exactly in your, like where you are in your cycle and Mm -hmm. when, you know, to do these different procedures, it's just so a lot involved. And Um, so I felt like that definitely impacts the loss quite a bit. Yeah, it really does. Like I, well, and then I was like, you had a loss after a lot, you know, like on top of the, yes, like, yeah, your heart does feel like it's way more into it. Cause you're like, I'm gonna, we're doing this. We're doing this really on purpose. And yes, um, yes, yes. Yeah. I know it was. And, and I think it was hard too, because 
nobody, like we, none of our family, well, my mom did know that we were going through this, but yeah. we didn't, our friends didn't know. We weren't really like, they knew that we were going through treatments, but we didn't tell them that we were pregnant just because we wanted to like kind of keep things to ourselves for a little while. And so I think that was hard, you know, in the sense that you don't have the support like you do when your baby is full term. Exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah. Miscarriage yeah. also is just another really tricky area. Yeah. Cause a lot of people don't say anything for mm-hmm. a good long while before. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, so I, um, I'm assuming when you guys did get pregnant with Parker, yes. then yeah. that was probably, I mean, obviously you were probably worried. I would be worried again. Cause you're just like, Oh, that should have worked or, you know, like yes. we we're pregnant yeah. over I, time there. Yeah. We were, we were nervous and we were scared and, at that point, we were kind of questioning, you know, are are we kind of at the end of our rope here with this? Like, is this a sign? And like, we didn't know how much longer we were willing to go through these treatments. You know, we already had two living children that we were so thankful for. And, um, you know, our heart just felt like, hearts felt like we needed one more little kiddo to complete our family. And I'm glad that we pushed forward and yeah. now we have our youngest, but um yeah, it was scary. We were afraid to keep going. And what if this resulted in the same, yeah. you know, lo- loss again? Like I didn't know if I'd, how I'd be able to pick myself up after. Um, and it's hard when you have kids and you're trying to yeah. grieve, but also parent at the same time. So that definitely weighed on us as well. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, Erica, what are your, like, so you, because I, I I just keep thinking of like you having had Ryan, your oldest son, after Avery, pretty close to after you lost her. And then also just even having your your second son and your third son. I just um how has pregnancy and also parenting after loss looked like for you? Has has that changed any perspectives for you in how you parent your kids, your boys? Oh gosh. I mean, parenting is it, I mean, it's hard as it is, oh, but yes. then <laughs> Um, you know, you're trying to navigate this journey of grief, like along with caring for your living children. So it, it is difficult. Um, I'm sorry, Winter. I'm just trying to na- think of my thoughts here. Oh, that's it's um, a big old question, though, because yeah. parenting in general is a huge old. Yeah. And then parenting after loss is like, because I don't know about you, like when I parent, like it really changed my perspective of like having lost a son. I'm like, oh, man. Like you mentioned before, you're like, TV was very trivial or it. And that's the, that's the thing. I'm like you, I feel like it changes your perspective as a parent when you're like, yes. anything can change. Things can change on a dime. And I, I try really hard to capture a little bit more moments when I would be just, you know, watching TV, like you said, or mom on my phone yes. or something. <laughs> no, that's so nicely said. I feel like, you know, we value time a little bit differently, um, and like make it our purposeful and making the time to spend as a family and try not to get swept up in the, Oh, the house has to be cleaned and this has to be that, you know, try to really spend that time. Um, but I feel like on the negative side, uh, we worry so much. I mean, and I know as parents, you know, we worry as it is. Yeah. But I, I feel like it heightened, like going through loss has really heightened my sense of like just anxiety and fear and, you know, wanting to be in control of every little bit of thing that I can. I mean, like my kids take the bus to school and that makes me nervous. Like it just, I feel like we have a, a heightened sense of anxiety and like nervousness for them and yeah. setting them out in the world. It's, it's scary because you only have control over so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, when you said that, I was like, oh yeah, I do that too. Actually. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause there's that, there's a flip side of the coin of where we're like, you really treasure things, but then all the, at the same time, you kind of hold it onto it really tightly. At least I do now that you say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's hard. You know, my, my mom will say to me like, oh my gosh, like you need to like, chill out or, you know, but it's, 
you know, when she has the kids and I'll say like, are they okay to make sure you do this? Make And she's like, I know, I, I know, but <laughs> I it's, raised you. <laughs> yes. But it's so hard to let go of that because yeah. they're your heart. And, um, you know, there's always that little thought in the back of your head. Like what if something could happen? And yeah, that fear can sometimes really take over. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you d- you do to like combat that fear for for those who are I mean as as words of advice for those who may be parenting after loss or are will be are maybe pregnant after loss and mm-hmm. are going to have to navigate those waters. Gosh, um that's a tricky question to that's answer. That's a tricky question, uh, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I I mostly try to just push the thoughts aside um like take a, take a breath, um, reassure myself that, you know, it's okay that like, they're going to be okay. And I think also like sometimes technology is helpful. Like our son has like a little, our oldest son has a, like a watch where he can oh, okay. like one of those Check watches or whatever. Can, yes. Yeah. It, but it is difficult, you know, just trying to navigate that, um, trying to quiet your mind from those, those negative thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts can totally get out of control. At least mine do. And so I always have to put a check on them. That's what helps me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That. So, and I know that you have in the past um, facilitated actually the um, one of these peer supported support groups. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me a little bit about how that has looked and why did you decide to do that? Like why? Yeah, why why did you decide to go ahead and be a moderator for that? Sure. Yeah. Um so through the Tears Foundation, mm-hmm. um the pregnancy and parenting after loss support group was just so instrumental for me in mm-hmm. navigating my way through through pregnancy after especially with our oldest son after right. losing Avery that I just felt like in my heart compelled to like help other moms and give back and Um, let them see that they can make it through this journey as really difficult and hard as it may be that, you know, you'll hopefully you'll have, you'll have another baby and Mm -hmm. um, that there's, and that there's support to guide you through this, that you're not alone. And because it it is just so challenging that that long time to make it through the pregnancy. um, I think it just helps to have that monthly check-in to talk with other moms. Like, are you feeling this way? Is this Mm -hmm. normal? Mm -hmm. Um, What do you think about this? Have a sounding board that's somebody other than your immediate family. Um, It's just so helpful. So yeah, we have a a support group that's once a month and, you know, we, we talk about all sorts of things. It's no set topic. It just happens to be whatever's on people's mind that day Mm -hmm. or, but it's, it's nice. And it's just helpful. It's healing for me to be able to give back and help other people through the same, same journey. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, that's one thing I've noticed is that a lot of our moms that we talk to have this, like they feel compelled to give back to people, like give back to the community that helped them through, through how difficult a loss is. So yeah, I think that's really cool that you do that because we benefited from some amazing moderators that had gone through loss as well. I'm grateful for them. <laughs> yes, yes. Can't make it without it. So I think that's yeah, awesome. No. Erica, this has been so great to talk to you, um, especially about the parenting after loss and and kind of trying to navigate that and what what that looks like. Because it, some of the people that listen to this are not that far along and may not feel like that there is hope on the horizon of how things are going to look for them. So um, so I think you you bring some hope. And, and so we're I'm grateful for that. Is there any a last bit of advice you would like to um, share with our listeners so that, yeah, so that that will carry them off to the rest of their day? Yeah, I would just echo what you had said about, you know, there is hope. And when you're in these early stages of loss, it often feels like you can't make it through the day to day things and you don't know how you'll ever survive this horrible tragedy that you've been through, but you will. And it, it takes time and, but it, but you will see you'll have happiness. And I mean, I, I remember 
the first time I smiled and first time I laughed about things, there was that sort of sense of guilt that, you know, how could I be smiling or laughing after going through something so horrific? I felt like I was like dishonoring Avery, but I know she would want me to be happy. I know she would want me to be, to find joy and the good in things and to go on and have more children. So, you know, there, there is hope and just hold on to that. It's, it's a bumpy ride, but you'll, you'll make it through. That's perfect. Thank you. So oh, thank much you. Again, Erica. <laughs> I wish I could give you a hug. Thank you so much. <laughs>